The MLB trade deadline wrapped up yesterday. There was a lot of names that were moved. There was a lot of names that were expected to move that weren't moved, including a couple of the White Sox guys in Luis Robert Jr., Garrett Crochet, Tarek Skubal from the Tigers didn't move, Vlad Guerrero Jr., Bo Bichette from the Blue Jays. There was a lot of names that were on the want list for Mariners fans, and while the Mariners maybe could have used one more bat to add to the lineup, Overall, they had a great deadline. Ultimately, the key of the trade deadline is to make your team better for the playoff push, and the Mariners absolutely improved. So we're going to fly a ball high out towards the corner in left field, and it is there. It is gone. It's a home run on the Lansdowne Street from Randy Arozarena. Mexico, and here is a shot into right center field. This ball is back at the wall, and he's got another record for home runs in a single postseason. And Turner in the air to center field. That ball's hit well. Martinez on the run. This is way back. And it is gone. It is a walk-off home run. 2-2. Two -two, swing and a line drive in a right field. That's going to drop in for a base hit. Big league year. 3-2. Got him. And you very well could make the argument that the Mariners made the most impactful moves based on their current needs compared to any other team in baseball. In total, the Seattle Mariners acquired outfielder Randy Rosarena, relief pitcher Jimmy Garcia, infielder Justin Turner, as well as relief pitcher JT Chargois. And considering the costs that some teams were paying for below average players, for example, the Houston Astros, shout out to you guys. The Houston Astros traded away their number two, number three, and 26 overall prospect, for just two months of a rental of Yusei Kikuchi. And when you look at what it cost the Padres to go out and acquire depth for their bullpen, they got Tanner Scott from the Miami Marlins along with right-handed pitcher Brian Hoeing. The Padres had to send their number two, four, five, and 24 overall prospects to get those two guys. You really have to credit the Mariners front office for multiple reasons. First off, they're in this position with the elite starting pitching and that rotation because of their drafting and developing with pitching. They didn't have to go overpay for arms at the deadline just to stay in the hunt. In the same light, their drafting and developing allowed them to go out and get Randy Rosarena, Justin Turner, Jimmy Garcia, JT Chargois, while only giving up one top 10 prospect who was Jonathan Class A. And some Mariners fans might be upset that they didn't go out and get Vlad Guerrero Jr. or they didn't get Yandy Diaz. The thing is, those teams didn't trade those players to anyone. Out of the top offensive players that were moved at the deadline, the Seattle Mariners went out and got two of the top six or so bats that were moved at the deadline. Randy Rosarena is a household name, a potential superstar, a former all-star. He was the 2020 ALCS MVP and has the record for the most home runs in a single postseason. And this very well might be somewhat of a buy low for the Mariners. This year, Randy Rosarena is batting 213 with a 717 OPS, which is still a little above league average, but compared to his prior years, it's definitely a dip. However, it is perfect timing to when the Mariners are acquiring Randy. He had a very slow start from April through May, but in 25 games in June, he was batting 291 with an 893 OPS. And so far in July, he's batting 288 with a 949 OPS. And of course, we all know it sucks to hit in T-Mobile Park. But Randy Rosarena at T-Mobile Park, over his 11 games, 48 plate appearances, he's slashing 289 with a 333 on base percentage, a 511 slug, with three home runs and a double. Looking at Randy's baseball savant page, there is a bit of red, although it is more faint red. Those first two months definitely put a damper on his season stats so far. But when he hits the ball, he's going to hit it hard. He's going to find barrels and he will walk a bit. He does have a 24.8% strikeout rate, and his fielding isn't phenomenal, although he has made some spectacular plays, including this grab at the wall in the All-Star game in Seattle last year. And it's not even all about his stats. The vibes that he's going to bring to that clubhouse are off the charts. And oh, by the way, he's not just a rental for this year. The Mariners also get him for two additional playoff pushes after this year. Randy is due about $2.8 million the rest of this year, and then the next two years he'll be in arbitration. So there's no set dollar figure for how much he'll make, but likely next year it'll be over $10 million. And in 2026, he'll have a pay increase as well. In order to acquire Randy Rosarena, it cost the Mariners their number 12 and 22 overall prospects in outfielder Aiden Smith, right-handed pitcher Brody Hopkins, as well as one player to be named later, which we likely won't know who that is until after this season. 
Then they go out and get Justin Turner. He is a proven veteran, 16 years in the league. He's been to the playoffs in nine separate seasons. At the very least, the impact that Justin Turner will have on this clubhouse to help guide Julio, Randy, these other young bats to watch how Justin Turner prepares, how he approaches at bats at the plate. You saw it in his first at bat as a Mariner. This is the type of guy that the Mariners were needing. A high contact rate, situational hitting, not trying to swing out of his shoes, trying to hit it over the wall. He dinks a ball over second base into the outfield. He scores a run and that is how you win baseball games. It is nice to be able to have Randy and Julio and Cal that can put the ball over the wall, but to have guys that can make contact when it's needed, then that is a huge add. It also doesn't hurt that over the past 14 days, Justin Turner is batting 413 with a 438 on base percentage, a 959 OPS. And so far this year, he's batting 258 with a 349 on base percentage, a 720 OPS. This isn't a guy that has a ton of pop at this point in his career. He is 39 years old. Look at his baseball savant chart. The important parts about his profile is that he puts together quality at bats. He doesn't miss when he swings. He's not a big strikeout guy, he walks. And it's because of that heavy contact ability that you see his bat speed is in the, in the lowest 1% of all of baseball. In return, the Mariners sent away 24-year-old outfield prospect, RJ Shrek. RJ is now listed as the Toronto Blue Jays 29th overall prospect. I don't believe he was a top 30 prospect for the Mariners at the time of the trade. And Justin Turner on joining the Seattle Mariners stated, they're in a dogfight. It will be exciting to go out and be a part of it to help them make a playoff run. I know the Mariners haven't won the division in quite some time, so I'm hoping I can be a piece that helps them with that. Next up, let's take a look at Jimmy Garcia. Jimmy Garcia is a 33-year-old right-handed relief pitcher who was formerly with the Toronto Blue Jays. He is not qualified in innings, but you look at his baseball savant page, he has an expected ERA of 2.27, an expected batting average against of 169. He has one of the highest strikeout rates in all of the league at 36.5% of the batters that he faces, he's striking out. He's also getting a 34.6% chase rate and a 30.3% whiff rate. Jimmy Garcia on the year for the Blue Jays has 30 innings pitched, a 0.8 whip, a 12.6 strikeouts per nine, and a 2.4 walks per nine. His pitch arsenal is a four-seam fastball that he throws 33% of the time, which averages 97 miles per hour and gets up to above 100 miles per hour at times. His four-seam fastball has a 114 batting average against and a 123 expected batting average. His main secondary is a curveball, which he throws 20.7% of the time. That averages 84 miles per hour. He then throws a sinker 19.6% of the time, a sweeper 14.6%, a changeup 8.9%, and a slider 3.3%. He's not your typical relief pitcher with two to three pitches. He's got five pitches that he can go to. He's in the final year of his contract, so he will become a free agent after this season, and he's due about $2 million the remainder of this season. Also something to look out for is that Jimmy Garcia was on the injured list for about a month early in the year from June 16th up to about July 19th with right elbow inflammation. And as I mentioned in this trade, the Mariners sent away outfield prospect Jonathan Classe, who was their number 10 overall prospect at the time of the trade, as well as minor league catching prospect Justin Sharp. Finally, the last acquisition by the Mariners at the deadline was relief pitcher JT Chargois. This is JT's second stint with the Mariners. He was a Mariner most recently back in 2021. And in 21, he was sent along with Austin Shenton to the Rays in exchange for relief pitcher Diego Castillo. His baseball savant page from this year isn't flashy. He's a sinker slider pitcher, but what's noteworthy is that his slider has a 179 batting average against and a 154 expected batting average. He's allowing just a 286 slug against this pitch. Guys are hitting a sinker much more with a 286 batting average, so you can expect JT to be ripping those sliders quite often. To acquire JT, the Mariners sent back right-handed pitching prospect Will Schomburg, who was pitching in high A Everett at the time, and he was an undrafted free agent in the 2023 class. Moving back to the Mariners drafting, specifically the 2023 draft class, in order to acquire Randy Rosarena and Justin Turner, they had to send away their fourth round pick, sixth round pick, and ninth round pick from, the, from last year's draft in order to acquire those guys. There is one player to be named later for the Randy trade. We'll have to see who that is. But these are all guys that are super young in the lower levels of the minor leagues. They weren't going to have an impact in the near future for the Seattle Mariners. For example, in order for the Cubs to acquire Isak Paredes, they had to trade away Christopher Morell, who is in his third year in the big leagues. He's got some big league experience and control. 
the Mariners didn't have to give up any big leaguers to acquire these guys. Overall, I have to give the Mariners deadline a B to B plus. If they would have gotten a guy like Isaiah kiner falefa a utility infielder that can play some of these spots where, you know, if JP Crawford is still hurt at shortstop, if they need him at third base somewhere else, just any additional bat to add to the depth would have helped. But because they didn't get that third bat, solid B plus. Add to that the fact that they were able to acquire Victor Robles for nothing. He was severely underperforming with the Nationals for years. He was a former top five prospect years ago, but he comes here. He's got the five tool ability. He's been hotter than the sun, one of the best hitters in all of baseball. Make sure to check out my player profile on him after this video to learn more about his story. But you now have Victor Robles, who is at the top of the order, extremely versatile, super fast. He's able to lay down a bunt. He's able to steal a base. He's able to play elite outfield and he has a cannon of an arm. There were the moves that were made at the actual deadline and then there was the acquisition of Victor Robles on top of that. Looking at this offensive roster coming into the season, I personally was excited. They got some solid big name guys. Mitch Garver was coming off of a World Series win with the Rangers. They acquired Jorge Polanco to fill what's been a black hole for the Mariners at second base. Jorge Polanco coming into this year was a career 260 to 270 hitter as a switch hitter. Some of these guys will return to their career norms for the rest of the season. It's just a matter of time and it has to happen. That being said, here is my ideal lineup, assuming that everyone is healthy. Victor Robles leading off and playing right field. Do not put J.B. Crawford back at leadoff. Victor Robles has proven that he is the leadoff hitter for the Mariners. As I mentioned, incredibly versatile. An outfield consisting of Randy, Julio, and Victor defensively is elite. Offensively has all the tools to be one of the best outfields in baseball. Batting second, I would have Randy Rosarena in left field. With the depth of the current lineup, I think it makes sense now to move Julio down to the three spot to have the guys to be able to drive in at the top of the order. To also be kind of protected in the order with Randy in front of him, Cal Raleigh big dumper behind him. So then you got Cal Raleigh batting four playing catcher. After that would be Justin Turner at first base. Justin has had a majority of his plate appearances in Toronto at DH. But even in his first couple games, Justin Turner shows that he can play a great first base, and you need that DH spot to be filled by Mitch Garver. Batting six, you got Jorge Polanco playing second base as a switch hitter. Then you got Mitch Garver at DH. Guys, go check out Ryan Divish's tweets about Mitch Garver post game today. You got to realize that these guys are human. They're not just characters on MLB The Show. You got to empathize with them and realize that they're feeling the exact same frustration that we are as fans, if not more frustrated because they're the ones that are underperforming. Then to round out the bottom of the order, you have some combination of who's playing third base that day, if it's Josh Rojas, if it's Dylan Moore, if it's someone else. And you also got JP Crawford at shortstop. Overall, a great deadline for the Seattle Mariners. They went out and filled a majority of the holes that they had on their roster. It would have been nice to get one more bat, but you certainly don't need to have the best offense in baseball. You just need to not have the 28th best offense in baseball. If they can have an offense that produces 15 to 20 overall in the league with one of the best starting rotations in baseball, one of the best bullpens in baseball, they're gonna win a lot of games and they have a true shot at winning the division for the first time since 2001. And then you look at what the Astros and the Rangers did and you've got to be very happy. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below on the Seattle Mariners trade deadline. And if you're a fan of an opposing team, feel free to comment below what your team did and your opinion as well. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.